What's going on, everybody? <laughs> Let's do a uh, really quick uh, live feed for every single one of you. <clears throat> Let's see how many people we can get. Apparently, if we put on the, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do a exercise where if you use the word crisis and if you put it as a title in the Facebook, uh, if it is get, if it gets shadow banned, and apparently it, it does. Apparently, if you use the word uh, crisis, and if you use the word Biden in Facebook. Uh, it gets shadow banned, so I don't know how many people I'm going to get right now. Uh, but finally, people, how's everybody doing? Oscar Blue right here. Finally, good afternoon to everybody. Uh, finally, Joe Biden uses the word a crisis and as in terms to the border situation. And I was just doing an interview and uh, with a radio station in Miami, and. I have been there frequently now for the past month. And as I was there frequently for the past, I have been frequently for the past month, uh, you know, one of the things that they were asking me consistently is why he doesn't, you know, call it a crisis when we are seeing all this stuff. And today, the first thing that they told me is like, Oscar, he finally said the word crisis. He finally said it. And I said, yes, you know, but it's a lot of people need to understand that it's not just an immigration crisis. This is a security factor which is happening in our borders, in our cities. This is a security crisis. It's a national security crisis, really. And if you, if you talk about it that way, uh, it is that, you know, potentially it is that. We have been getting a lot of uh, cartel activity, a lot, a lot of organized crime activity, violent and uh, you know, in delinquent activity, which has you know turned into events of uh, human remains, uh, five different places on the weekend. It was the most violent weekend in 2021 that Tijuana has gone through. And you know, this kind of situations, they determined, they determined a potential, you know, categorize a potential category of you know a crisis. You know, this is. What we're going through right now, it is not only just denominating a crisis in the United States. Mexicans, we are going through a crisis right now that is economical crisis, that is a security crisis, and ultimately now you push the migration situation, which it cranks up to a more difficult uh, situation, which is, which is a crisis now. And now you can understand, now you can understand that practically uh, we are going through a situation where nobody wanted it to call it that. Nobody wanted to say the word crisis. But now you got a president that practically just said right now, and he's admitting to the fact that it is, and it is, and he used the word crisis. Finally, finally, after you get 18,000 unaccompanied minors in uh, in the United States of America, after you have 170, 175,000 irregular entrances in the month of March, after you see, you know, uh, the organized crime operating on the other side of the border, on the other side of the fence, after you see, you know, these leftist activists that they're taking advantage of this situation, after you see all of that, you finally take the decision of saying, there's a, he used the word crisis in a statement and that is you know oh my god how, how much you need to be how much you need to see how much things they need to tell you for you to understand that there's an actual situation on the other side of the border and you know that these activists these liberal activists right now they're crying their heads off right now because they want it to be addressed as a challenge they don't want to be exacerbated into a into a place where you can actually call it a crisis you don't you don't you don't you don't want to say that you don't want to address the situation like that they want it they want it to continue to be called a challenge a challenge a challenge 
You know, it's just amazing how they want it. And now they're crying because now they see that their Gen Saki just wants to militarize Honduras, Guatemala, and Mexico, and El Salvador. And they were crying because, oh my God, he said 125,000 and he was going to let in in a fiscal year. And it's not 125,000. It is six. He, he, he went back to the, the, the Donald Trump policy that only he's going to let in 15,000. And now from 15,000, oh my God, the activists went in there. And now it's amazing that activists have power over the decisions of a president. It's just amazing. And now from that, from 15,000, you go from 125,000 you went down to 100 uh, to 15,000 to the Trump policy you said no way I'm not going to do that because activists and lawmakers are pressuring the president that is the first time that I see you know these Marxist act activist uh, groups that they have power over a decision of a president it's just oh my god oh my god it's just unbelievable and now that you have power over a president over a decision of a president you overturn the decision of fifteen thousand, and then you go up to sixty two thousand. and so now he changed the policy that he's going to let in people by the quantities of 62 that is almost half of what he promised because he said that he was going to let in 125,000. so it will be a little bit less than half that is 65 62,500 people so just to tell you how much it takes how much it takes for a person to understand that there is a crisis all these events that have been happening they need to happen just for everybody to get it through their heads how much it needs to happen for a person to understand that there's a crisis oh that there's a situation oh that there's uh oh there's uh you know potential uh you know a potential crisis situation. Somebody's asking me, do you speak Spanish? Uh, hablas español. Claro que hablo español. Soy de Tijuana, Baja California, nacido aquí. Acabo de hacer un segmento en español. Si quieres ir a verlo, eh, lo acabo de hacer. Eh, lo puedes ver en mi plataforma y ahí está. Acabo de hacerlo primero en español y estoy haciéndolo en inglés ahora. So, somebody's asking me, do you speak Spanish? <laughs> uh, so, uh, it is this unbelievable that it takes all of this, it takes all of this for a person to understand that we are in the middle of a serious situation. In the middle of a really serious, serious situation. It's not only the United States what is happening on the other side, it's what is happening on this side, really, on our country of Mexico, that we're going through an insecurity problem right now. That is horrible what is happening in two our cities. You know what just happened to Calexico that is uh, the Department of Homeland Security declared to Calexico, uh, California, do not travel to Mexicali, that is the other side of the border. You know, this is, you know, for everybody to understand, it's, everybody believes in political parties. That's why I'm not for a Democratic Party. I'm not a Republican, for God's sake. I, I can't be because I am I'm a Mexican citizen. And in my country of Mexico, I am not for no political party. But this administration of Joe Biden has lied to the migrants face like you don't even imagine. They are lying through their teeth in front of their faces. They are lying to them and telling them we are going to let in 125,000. And he went back to the to the Trump policies of just letting in 15,000. And then after that, he goes up 62,000. These are not trophies. These are not accomplishments. These are people that they're leaving their homes, they're leaving their properties, they're selling everything because you opened your mouth and said that you were gonna let in 125,000. This is not just having fun and giving statements and Jen Psaki going on a press conference and saying, you know what, uh, we're gonna militarize now Honduras, El Salvador and Guatemala. Who are you to tell other countries to militarize other countries? First and foremost, in other countries, have they already talked to you about militarizing their countries? Who are you to give the authority to other countries? Just because they are a third world class country does not mean that you have, you know, authority to order them what to do, what not to do. A total disrespect. This is what Najib Bukele, the president of El Salvador, does not want no governmental official from the current administration of Joe Biden in his country. He's not going to receive them because he went to the Capitol on the 8th of February and nobody, nobody was receiving him. A total disgrace and a total disrespect to a president. 
So finally, for everybody to finish this live feed, finally, Joe Biden uses the word crisis in one of his statements. Finally, he uses the word crisis. Go and watch uh, his statement about this uh, that he just did. The United States is going through so much division right now that it's so, that it's so sad to see the most powerful country in the world. Uh, Bukele es un duro y dice la pura verdad. Sí, es durísimo. Y de acuerdo contigo. Y es uno de los más honestos presidentes en Centroamérica y Sudamérica que tenemos ahorita. Y es uno de los presidentes que se preocupa por su gente y se preocupa por la economía de su país y por sacar a su país adelante. Bukele, somebody saying right here, Bukele is a really strong president. And I'm saying, yes, Bukele is a really strong president. He's the only president in Central America and South America that is fighting for the rights of his country and for his people. That is an actual fact. You can go and fact check me about this, man. So, for everybody that is watching, it was nice talking to you guys uh, in this... Uh, and this evening, wow, man, he uses the word crisis for the first time in a statement. Let's applaud to that. For God's sake, it took, I don't know how many months for you to understand that you have a situation on the other side of the border. Whew, my God. God bless you all. Have a, a beautiful evening. We will talk about it uh, tomorrow morning at another live feed so we can explain the situation, the current situations, man. That they are particularly, you know, happening in our country. And also, another situation. Lo que está pasando en Cuba. Es increíble lo que está pasando en Cuba. The things that are happening in Cuba. We're going to talk about it also tomorrow. El hermano de Fidel Castro por fin deja el poder. Pero veremos quién se queda en el poder. The Castros finally leave power in Cuba. The brother of, 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 of uh, Fidel Castro at 89, 89 years of age, 89 years of age, he leaves the power. So we will know who is going to be the new leader and if communism is going to finally end. We don't know that. Veremos quién queda en el poder en Cuba porque ya el hermano de Fidel Castro deja el poder por fin. Los Castros dejan el poder. Por Dios santo, ojalá los cubanos entiendan que se tiene que liberar a Cuba ya de, este, de esta agenda tan horrorífica que es el comunismo. Cuba tiene que ser libre. Cuba needs to be free without communism in their, in their, in their, in their island, in their land. Beautiful Cuban people. Today, I don't know if they're celebrating or not, but if you ask a Cuban if they want communism in their country, just ask them. I have interviewed a lot of Cubans in these migrant caravans and all of the Cubans that I have interviewed that I said, hey, what do you think about Americans wanting communism in their country? Send them to Cuba, they say. Mándalos a Cuba. Send them to Cuba so they can experience communism. And people that want socialism in their countries, send them to Venezuela also. That's what they're saying. <laughs> God bless you all. We will talk a little bit later. We'll talk a little bit later this afternoon. Stay safe. Uh, and uh, we will have a, a live feed talking about the situations in Cuba and also this statement of Joe Biden. Go over there and, and uh, try to find the statement that he just did. God bless you all. Stay safe. Follow my partner, Real Anthony. I went on Orbeez, uh, Facebook, uh, Partner, YouTube and Gav and all these platforms. You can follow me as Oscar uh, Blue at YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and also Rumble. God bless you all. Stay safe in my channel and Telegram. Stay safe and like we always say, people, peace and love because always your country first. God bless.